If you've been looking into podcasting at all, then you've probably heard the term RSS feed. But before that, or if you don't spend a lot of time in podcasting or the tech space, then you probably don't hear the term RSS a lot, if at all. But RSS is a mainstay of open information on the web, and perhaps the most crucial part of a podcast besides the actual audio and video that make up the podcast. So today I want to take a look at the history of RSS, how it works, and how you can get your own RSS feed from RSS.com. Hey everybody, my name is Joe Casabona. I am the RSS.com evangelist. And well, suffice to say, we're pretty big fans of RSS and RSS feeds. So sit back and relax and let's take a look at the crucial technology that allows podcasts to exist. Okay, so first things first, RSS is a pretty old technology. It is 25 years old as I record this video, and it is actually a subset of a file called XML. These XML files for uh, at the most basic level make it very easy for computers to read information by associating specific words with other data. So RSS started in March 1999 as part of the Netscape project, but it's evolved to so much more beyond that, allowing us to aggregate the news and information that we want to see all in one place. We're basically creating our own personalized news site. So exactly how does this work? Well, let's say you have a website. If you're using a website with a platform like WordPress or any other website platform that allows you to have an RSS feed, then you will get that RSS feed. The information from your website will be put into an RSS feed. From there, other people can subscribe to that RSS feed, which means that your information will be automatically disseminated across the internet, whether it's your blog or your podcast. Now, over on our blog, and I will link this in the description, we do have a write-up on exactly what RSS feeds are and how it works, but here's the general idea, right? It's what we just saw. You have a website that you like to read, you grab its RSS feed, you put it into a service like Feedly or Omnivore, and then the information from that website is delivered directly to you. So what information is included in an RSS feed? Well, if we look at the RSS feed for the RSS.com blog, you can see that this looks like code. And technically speaking, you can put just about anything in an RSS feed. But just like when you do a renovation on a house or other construction or just about anything in the real world, there are specifications and standards that you should follow to make sure that your feed is valid and that things that read RSS feeds will be able to read your RSS feed. So this isn't a comprehensive list, but for blogs and uh, uh, blog posts and news articles, you'll find things like the title of the blog, the logo, the link in the description of the website, and you'll also have the title, link, publication date, category, link, and description or content for each article. An RSS feed can include any number of articles, you can usually specify that, and RSS feeds can be paginated, so if your RSS feed includes the 10 most recent items, and you have 20, you can have an RSS feed get page two of that content. Now, this is important because there are websites out there like Feedly and I Know Reader and Omnivore that will read RSS feeds and display the stories for you in an easy to consume fashion. So this is my Feedly account. This is what it looks like. People can add RSS feeds the way they want. So if I wanted to add RSS.com, which I'm already subscribed to, but 
I would type in the feed or maybe just the URL to the blog and Feedly can figure out which one I want. And then when I actually visit the RSS feeds here, it'll give me a list of the unread stories I have. When I click on one, I will see what the content of the RSS feed is. For our blog, we're displaying the excerpt and then we can have people click through to actually visit the story on our website. And this is generally how RSS feed readers work. When it comes to podcasting, you can imagine that podcast RSS feeds are an even smaller subset uh, where there's specific information included just for podcasts. So this is called the podcast namespace, and it's basically an add-on or an extension of RSS feeds. So you can see on the website podcasting2.org that there are some new namespaces here for uh, for podcast RSS feeds, including the podcast episode, license, season, things like pod roll and chapters. And these are things that most RSS readers won't really know what to do with, but podcast apps that bring in these specific types of RSS feeds will know exactly what to do with them. And the great thing about RSS and RSS feeds is that each publishing tool, host, and app can choose to incrementally support each of these things. So it's not an all or nothing thing. They can build up to them. For example, if we go to the podcast publishing tools and hosting providers, we see lots of different hosting providers here. And if we click on one like rss.com, we could see the podcast namespace features. That's the add-ons for RSS feeds for podcasts. You can see the ones that we support at rss.com, including transcript, if it's locked, chapter, soundbite, location, pod roll, funding, and more. Similarly, if we look at some apps here that are podcasting apps, we can see what features they support uh, from a podcast standpoint. So if I pick on Podcast Guru here, you can see that they support a number of features like chapters, locations, uh, season, uh, live, and more. So when you're choosing how to listen to podcasts, you may be interested in this to see, oh, sometimes podcasters will go live, and I know that Podcast Guru supports that. Or, hey, I want to uh, be able to support the podcasters I listen to natively, and so they support the funding and the value tag, which is very cool. And that really brings me to the next point here, which is how are RSS feeds used in podcasting and podcasting platforms? Well, there are really two ways to use RSS feeds in podcasting. The first way is when subscribing to podcasts. Podcast apps are basically glorified RSS readers that take in the special information we just looked at and displays them in a user-friendly way for listeners and followers. This is how Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcasts, Pocket Casts, and yes, even YouTube work. So if you are using YouTube's native RSS ingestion to get your show onto YouTube, you would connect the RSS feed here. Similarly, if you are listening in YouTube Music or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, to a podcast they are pulling from that RSS feed. Now, the second way that you would use RSS in podcasting is as a publisher. So if you are a podcaster and you are creating new episodes, when you add a new podcast episode, it gets added to your RSS feed and that feed sends a signal to all of those apps, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more that are watching that feed so it knows to display new episodes to its listeners. And this is really important because, yes, you can just upload an audio file somewhere and say, hey, I've uploaded a new podcast episode and you can now go listen to it. But when you use a proper service like RSS.com, You'll get all of those excellent and extra features that we talked about earlier. The ability to have people donate to your show using value for value or a funding link. The ability to live stream directly in a podcasting app 
the ability to have transcripts, which we can auto generate at rss.com and more. So if you want to have a podcast, you know you need an RSS feed to reach as many people as possible. What exactly do you do? Well, over at rss.com, you can get started completely for free, no credit card required, and you can sign up for an rss.com account. Then once you do that, you can create a new podcast, add the title and description, and we will generate an RSS feed for you. Once you have that all set up and your show is ready to go, you can copy the RSS feed and share it with whoever you'd like. And we can also distribute your show to many platforms automatically. And then we have step-by-step instructions for the ones where we will guide you through distribution if we can't do it for you. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed it. And of course, if you want to get your own RSS feed for a podcast, you can head over to rss.com. Once again, my name is Joe Casabona. I am the evangelist here at rss.com. And if you have any questions about the service or about RSS feeds in general, definitely leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to click that like and subscribe button. And until next time, I'll see you out there.